announcements. For meetings this week, some normal meetings, we have the Monday morning Bible study meeting with Carol Brody at 9.30. On Tuesdays at 10 a.m., there's a Stephen Ministry Supervision meeting. And Tuesday at 7 p.m. is the SPPRC meeting. And Wednesday at noon, we have... Um, <laughs> Wednesday at noon, we have the prayer meeting with Pastor Kate, and 7 p.m. is the Bible study with Beth. Uh, and birthdays this week. We've had a lot of birthdays this month, and uh, the month is just, we're coming up halfway, so there's, there's still more. This week, we have Janet Weiss on the 10th, Michaela Rice on the 14th, and McKenna Rice on the 14th. And then uh, for anniversaries, I just wanted to say a happy 45th anniversary to Jim and Michelle Monroe. <laughs> Happy anniversary. <laughs> For anyone who had no idea, you're Jim Monroe, right? Yeah. Okay, and Michelle's back there behind the organ. Yep. I know everybody in here knows that, though. Okay, did I miss anything? Well, happy anniversary. You said 45 years? 45 years. Good job. Is that what you're supposed to say for an anniversary? Good job? Anything what are you supposed works, to say? <laughs> Curious. I don't know. Anything wow, works. you made it that long? I don't think you're allowed to say that, are you? Uh, <laughs> so anyways, our opening hymn is Spirit of the Living God, Fall Afresh on Me. Please join me in the opening prayer. Almighty God, whom truly, truly to know is, is everlasting life, life. Grant, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, to be the, the way, the, the truth, truth, and, and the, the life, life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. life. Through Jesus Christ, Christ your our Son, Son, our Lord. Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We now have some special music.
Our first scripture reading today is John 15, it's 9 through 17. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept, my, kept in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because a servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. I forgot to mention that we're having some uh, technological difficulties, and so George Gravach had recorded that scripture reading, but uh, we're, we were having some trouble getting it up and going. And I just want to give thanks for uh, Mike and Cindy who are up in the booth today. Uh, Cindy's learning how to do this so Mike can get a break. Yes, you can give them a hand clap. So our next reading is from Acts chapter 10, starting with verse 44. While Peter was still speaking, these words the Holy Spirit, came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. I was thinking about the three things I managed not to do when I walked over here, guys. Like, I didn't open this up before. And I want my water. Will you pray with me? Good and gracious God, may our hearts and minds be open to what you would have us learn this day. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we're in the season of Easter, that's 50 whole days, where you're allowed to do this to one another when you, when you greet one another. Christ is risen. Alleluia. That's the important part, by the way, or at least I've always thought so. Um, so maybe it's the part where you affirm that Jesus has risen from the dead. That's actually pretty significant. It's, it's the most profound part of what it is that we're called to believe, that we believe that God doesn't remain dead, that he is risen from the dead. And it's because he's risen from the dead that we can experience forgiveness for sin. Now, we've been going through the book of Acts, which is the story of the establishment of the church. It's the story of the creation of the church. It's, it's messy, which I would hope that you would expect, because when you get a bunch of people together, how often do they agree? And so now you have a group of people, one who started off in one religion and one who started off in a totally different set, and they're all coming together. The first is, well, the disciples were all Jewish. They came from a certain understanding of the faith. But most of the people who were starting to join the movement did not. I wish I knew how to pause better for this. So Peter's now confronted with a particular issue. He is one of the original disciples. The people who were called apostles were folks who, along with the disciples, actually witnessed the life of Jesus on earth. And now he has this whole new group of people in chapter 10 who are beginning to respond to the message that Jesus is risen that Jesus died for their sins, that he rose from the dead, and that he has invited them into this new way of living. And now all of these people are starting to come into this small group of, of, of people that all understood things in a specific kind of way. It's, it's like a church, isn't it? 
you know, we've never done it that way before. Imagine the conversation around, we've never done it that way before, you all have to get circumcised. <laughs> because that is a part of what was happening, in case you missed that. So for all the teenagers, go ahead and just read it. It's there. See, when they say they're uncircumcised, they're saying, oh, but then they should be. That's, that's actually what all of that talking back and forth actually means. But they're trying to become this movement together from a group of totally different people, people from different understandings of the way the world worked beforehand, and now they're brought together because they believe that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. So they have to figure out how they understand whether or not somebody is genuine in their faith commitment. Now, I started by saying we're in the 50 days of Easter. That's because when we hit Pentecost, 50 days, because that's what that actually means, pent, 50, 50 days, we will read the second chapter in the book of Acts. But right now we're on chapter 10. But if you'll notice, chapter 10 refers to chapter 2. Because Peter talks about how he saw that these Gentile believers were speaking in tongues. Which, according to chapter 2, is evidence that they have received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And because there is evidence that they have received the gift of the Holy Spirit, then it's time to baptize them. That's what this whole discussion is about. And so, can you imagine the conversations at a committee meeting around this one? I just got, I, I'm glad you laughed, because the picture I have is quite funny in my head. So someone please put forth a motion as to whether or not we think they should be baptized. Is there a second? There's no second. I heard a second. Well, I heard a second, Jim. I don't know who did it. Who's taking notes? Right? And then we go through the whole process and we discuss as to whether or not we thought... No? We wouldn't do that? Let me tell you something about churches. You like to do things in orderly fashions and in the ways that you know how to do them. So when this whole new group of people showed up, even though they weren't called a church at that point because this was the synagogue, these were Jewish believers who believed that the Messiah had come, they were having those same kind of conversations, but off in the corners afterwards. What should we do? How do we do this? How do we incorporate these folks in? Do they really believe? How do we know they really believe? They didn't, they didn't believe the story that created us. They didn't believe that God brought us out of the desert in Egypt. They didn't believe that we crossed the River Jordan. They don't know those stories like we do. So how is it that we're going to figure out if they're supposed to be a part of who we are? And Peter says it comes down to this. Can you see evidence of the Holy Spirit at work in them? And then it says gift of tongues. Who's ever been to a Pentecostal church? If you have not been to a Pentecostal church, please go. And you're going, no, fine, wait till the pandemic's over, okay? <laughs> but once we get to the other side of it, I would actually strongly encourage you, you can watch anything online right now, right? So you could try it that way. But here's the thing, the Pentecostal movement came from the Wesleyan movement. Did you know that? It did. We gave birth to it. Because when when in the, in the uh, 1800s, when we had these things called uh, tent revivals and stuff, we did that, by the way. I know you all think, oh, those Baptists or somebody else, but no, it was the Methodists who started it. And we would have these tent revivals all week long, and they would be so exuberant in the gifts and receiving the Holy Spirit that they had to talk about whether or not it was okay to bark. I said bark. You can look it up. They did. They had whole conversations about whether or not it was a holy bark. Can you imagine that? Let's picture that committee meeting again. I put forth a motion that that makes me uncomfortable. Do I get a second, right? <laughs> now let's figure out if this is going to be a rule for worship, right? I know I'm making a little bit of a joke out of this, but the truth is this is kind of the way that we live through things. It's the way we understand how to figure out what's right, what's wrong, what's a part of the established rule of the body and what's not. See, this is what they were trying to figure out during this time period. They were trying to figure out what was supposed to be the established rule of the body because now it's different. When it was just Jewish folks who were converting, well, they had an established set of rules that they could go look at and use and everybody knew them. But when these new people started coming in, they had to have a new conversation about what it meant to look like the church. 
And so when these believers began to speak in tongues, now this can be interpreted multiple ways, and I said a Pentecostal church because they have one way of interpreting it. I come from a tradition originally, I, I started off in the Church of the Nazarene, they don't do that, okay? They don't dance either. But they interpreted that text as saying that the person had the ability to interpret language, which is honestly the way I interpret that text, but there are multiple ways to do it, so if you have a different opinion on this one, we're good. <laughs> but whatever the gift of speaking in tongues was, it was something they all recognized, they recognized it as evidence that the Holy Spirit was at work in these folks who had come into this church, into the life of their community of faith, which is a better term than church, by the way. This particular passage actually follows a passage I referenced the other week, which is where they describe how as the community grew, people joined and they sold everything that they had and they became a part of a community that took care of one another, lived in common with one another. There was no need. Whatever needed to be taken care of was cared for because when they came in, they sold their belongings. And so there was money for them to go to if they, they had an expense or something they needed. Food was there. There was no thought or worry at all. And then this piece comes, right? Well, it's okay if we understand who all of these people are, especially if they're our family, right? Because we know them. It's easy enough to accept those folks in, but when these new people come in and, they're, and, and they sound, they're starting to sound like we sound, but I'm not quite sure because they don't look right. Or maybe they don't speak with the correct accent, but, I, but, but th there's something about them and I want to find a way to keep them out. And Peter notices that this is a problem because he sees that the Holy Spirit is at work in them and he says, wait a second, we've got to figure this out. Wait, they're speaking in tongues. And if they're speaking in tongues, that means they've received the blessing of the Holy Spirit. And if they've received the blessing of the Holy Spirit, well, that's evidence enough that they believe that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. Let's baptize them and baptize them now. What would church look like if we did that? Can I get a bat, like a like a pool baptismal thing up here? I'd like that. See, I, I have some of those bat, those Pentecostal Baptist leanings. I know, I'm not an enthusiastic one though. Okay, so don't worry. I'm I'm not going to start jumping up. I'll just sprain my ankle again. <laughs> but that's how fast they were joining. That's how much excitement was building because people could hear. And they understood and they could see and they were responding to this witness that they saw. Now the reason it's important for us to look at that gospel text from John is because Jesus says something very clearly to his disciples when he speaks to them in that 15th chapter of John. There's something about love in there, right? If you have my love, then you can love. But the more significant piece at least in this context today, is the part where he looks at the disciples and he says, you are no longer my servants. You are no longer people who are here just to serve me, but you are my friends. We are equals. He was trying to establish a new way of interacting with one another. That within the community of faith, we were meant to be on equal footing with one another before God. And that it was equally each and every person's responsibility to ensure that others understood what Jesus was doing what he was teaching. And so when Jesus gives the command to love, they understood that it meant to see people and to see them with the intrinsic value that God had created them with. It was for them to understand that to love one another meant that they had to make sure that no one was in need who was a part of the community of faith. It's already there in the Gospel of John before we get to the story of Acts. So when I was looking at the texts and I said to myself, I have no idea what a sermon title would be, I, I was joking with Robin that I should just put together a series of, 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 of sermon titles and have her pick, but then I was afraid that you guys wouldn't get my humor. And you'd be like, what was she really trying to say there? So I, I didn't do that. But the thing that struck me between these two stories and the thing that continues to strike me as we go through the season of Easter in, in this pandemic is, is how do we know how do we know that the way in which we are living is some kind of witness? How do we know how to be the church when we're wearing masks and we're keeping distance if you're behaving yourselves? I had to scold somebody. Wear your mask. He's out there. I'm looking. Is it on? Can't see it on camera. <laughs> don't make me say it, okay? I don't want to. 
but as we continue on in this season of pandemic, when we meet one another, have you had that issue where you go, was that so-and-so when you walk into the store? But you can't tell because this is all, you just see this and you haven't seen them enough recently to have any idea what their eyes look like anymore. And when was the last time somebody got a haircut, right? And I know we've gone on and so the, the salons are open again, so we're getting haircuts again, right? I know, new haircuts, we can't figure out who's who, right? But it's difficult to figure out how we're supposed to first understand that we are showing evidence of the faith. Because the last time I checked, this was not a church that spoke in tongues in the Pentecostal sense. Am I right? Can I get an amen? amen. Oh, that's funny. Oh, look at that. You responded. <laughs> but I think the purpose of that whole speaking in tongues is this. That we find the way to translate whatever it is that we understand about the faith so that someone else that does not know it can understand what it means when we say that we believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. When Peter called the, the people to examine how to trust that the Spirit was at work in someone, when Jesus says to the disciples, you're no longer ser my servants, but you're my friends, what they're trying to establish is an understanding of how to live in community with one another. A way to understand that, yes, the Holy Spirit is at work in each one of us. Now, it's been a tough year, right? Right? George, I really do want the article you were talking about. He mentioned that there was an article. I don't get the newspaper anymore. I'm one of those people, okay? I use apps. But he mentioned there was an article in the paper about what's happening to clergy in the pandemic. Let me, I'm, I'm going to be real for a moment. It's awful, okay? I know that I get up here and I do every Sunday morning, but when like a teacher in a school or a doctor in a doctor's office or a nurse or anybody who has to be face to face with other people has to figure out how do I set this up so I know that I am making sure that people are safe. Now take that and go back a year when all of the information we had was don't do anything, right? And figure out when they go, wait, we went from don't do anything, very little guidance to go ahead and do what you want. Do you ever notice that that's the way it went? Well, if you had to make decisions, if you were in a place where you had to make those decisions and implement those rules, and I saw the head nods, you know that this was hard, and it was stressful, and it continues to be stressful. And it's not just about whether or not a clergy person can stand up and lead worship. It's about whether or not they should go and visit someone. It's about whether or not they have to listen to the various things that we're not doing, and we're sad, and we're, guess what? I'm sad, too. I miss it, too. When, when Jesus says to the disciples, you are my friends, he is saying to them, we are on equal footing. I know I've been ordained, but we're on equal footing in terms of our responsibility for sharing the message of Jesus with others. That also means we're on equal footing to see where someone is in need. We're on equal footing. We are each called and equipped with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, because that is the evidence of God at work in us. We are equipped with the gifts. I say, hey, what are the gifts of the Spirit, Jim? But I don't want to go through it right now. From Galatians, right? We all have those. We are all called to live into that way of living, to understand that we are to see others as God sees them, as equally in need of their love. We are to understand that we are to live with, uh, man, I'm just going to mess it up, so forget about it. He has a mic, though. You've got to turn the mic on. You've got to turn the mic on. Is the mic on? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Love joy. And yeah, now you got me thinking about it. Love now joy. you can't do it. <laughs> He's patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We'll go with self-control right now. No. <laughs> uh, honestly, if you go back to Galatians and you look at that text that talks about the fruits of the Spirit, it is basically... It, it, it's instructions. This is the way we are to live as Christians. This is the evidence that the Holy Spirit is at work in us when we are filled with those things. That does not mean that we are perfect 100% of the time, right? When you've been living with someone in a way that you have not for a whole plus year plus, do you, do you love them as much as you did at the beginning? I mean, okay, maybe. But how irritating has it been? How difficult, how easy do we lose our patience with one? appreciate that you did that out there because I'm feeling it so I, I understand that not everybody has a family they live with but but when you've been sequestered that's the only word I can come up with <laughs> quarantine for a long period of time with people in a way that you're not used to 
you grow on each other's nerves. You, you just do. You get there, right? And sometimes we get on each other's nerves because we, don't, we, we, live differently in, we live differently in terms of what we think is okay during this pandemic, right? There are so many different ways that we can irritate one another. But God calls us, even in the midst of that irritability and that, and that honestly, just plain bone-weary, tired thing of this whole pandemic, to continue to look for, to continue to look for his light at work in us and in others. And even though we continue to do the separation thing and the mask thing, he is calling us to find ways to serve him now as the body of Christ. And he is calling us to recognize that he has equipped us with the gifts of the Spirit so that we can share God's love with others. I know that it is not an easy task. And last week I called you to imagine different and new kinds of ministries that we can actually do in the midst of the pandemic and after. And I want to encourage you to continue to dream and to pray and to look for new ways, to be open to new ways, to be in ministry in this world because there are options. You can ask my children, but this is something I say all the time. There's more than one way to solve this problem. And maybe I can't see it right now. No, usually I do see it. He's shaking his head at me. Maybe I don't see it right now, and I need your help to figure it out. But God has called us even now. God has called us even now in our weariness and in our tiredness. As we've gone through this pandemic a whole year, at least this year, at least this year we can gather with our moms, right? At least we're moving forward. But I know that it can still be tiring. And so God calls us to hold on to the hope, the hope of new life in him, the hope of the ability that he can work in and through us to share his message of love with this world so that we can begin, begin to see not only the evidence of the Holy Spirit at work in us and in each other, but in the world around us. God has called us to be his hands and feet of love. He has called us to live into that commandment to love one another as he has loved us, as we are to love our neighbors. God has equipped us with the ability to share this message with this world that so desperately needs to know that there is an alternative to the way we currently live. And he has asked you to do it. So I know that you're not going to dance up and roll around in the aisles because we're not that Pentecostal church, right? But I do know that in our own way, we can enthusiastically and passionately follow God into whatever ministry he has called us into, into whatever new ways of living that he has called us into, that we can share this message of his love for us and for others with the world. You ready? I so want an alleluia, but I'm pretty sure you're not going to give it to me. So how about we go with this? Amen? Amen. See, I knew you could handle that. Thanks for the alleluia. All right, Jim. Our next hymn is Baptized in Water. Baptized in water, sealed by the Spirit, cleansed by the blood of Christ our King. Heirs of salvation, trusting His promise, faithfully now God. Baptized in water, sealed by the Spirit, dead in the tomb with Christ our King. One with his rising, freed and forgiven, thankfully now God's praises we sing. Baptized in water, 
sealed by the Spirit, marked with the sign of Christ our King, born of one Father, we are His children, joyfully us into a time of prayer with, with God and with each other. I'm not remembering any of the prayer requests. I'm going to invite us to continue to, to keep Verna Elling in, in your prayers as her mother has passed and uh, to continue to keep those who are dealing with um, any kind of illness in this time, whether it's the need for uh, surgery that's not just to continue to keep I can't read this all there's a lot here <laughs> I was trying to do two things at once and I can't right now so I'm going to invite us to to pray with God uh, with God with each other to give thanks for the people who have been mother figures in our lives as, as well as those who have been mothers let us pray Good and gracious God, as we gather before you in this time of prayer with you and with each other, we just ask for your continued transformation to be at work in each of us. May your spirit would continue to renew us and enable us to see needs where they are and the ability to meet those needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God, we lift up the process of distributing vaccines, not just in our own country, but in the world around us, as there are still many places that have yet to receive any. May those doses reach where they need to go. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And God, for those who continue to be in positions where they are asked to make decisions about what to do next in the midst of this pandemic, grant them your grace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, continue to remind us to make wise decisions. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. God, we lift up those who have been struggling with illness unrelated to the pandemic. God, may your healing touch be with them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift up those who grieve, who have left, lost loved ones throughout this last year and who have struggled with the various restrictions that this pandemic has placed on us as we grieve. May they know your comfort. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. God, we give you thanks for birthdays and anniversaries, for the joys of the life that we can share with each other. Lord, for your blessings. Hear our, hear our praise. praise. God, as you continue to work in and through us and call us to be your hands and feet at work in this world, may we develop the ability to see that you have blessed us. Blessed us with the ability to share the message of your love with this world. That you continue to work in and through us even in our moments of doubt and darkness.
Lord, we ask all of these things through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, praying as he taught us to. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. So we're not quite at the point where uh, we can start taking offerings in the midst of the worship service again, but uh, we were looking into some options of things that we can purchase that make an arm longer. <laughs> Basically, you just put a stick on the offering plate, right? But, the, but if we put a stick on our <laughs> gold offering plates, that would look a little weird, but I'd be good with it. I mean, duct tape, you can get duct tape in all sorts of patterns. I, I'm pretty sure you know that, Michelle Wilson, that we could, maybe we could do like leopard print, duct, no. Just let me have my moment. I was just being silly. But we are looking into some options so that we can begin to bring some of those things back into the life of worship. But for now, I encourage you to give back to God from whatever he has blessed you with. You can use the various apps that we are using, PayPal, Tithely, or the link on our website for DonorBox. You are more than welcome to place a check or envelope in the offering plates that are here or to mail them in. But I encourage you to give from whatever God has blessed you with for the building of his his kingdom. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here God, we give you thanks for all that you have blessed us with, and we pray that you would use these offerings for the building of your kingdom in this world and in the one to come. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is Come come Now Font of Every Blessing. Come thou font of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mountain fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise mine Ebenezer, hither by thy help I'm come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to sought me when a stranger wandering from the fold of God he to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood oh to grace how great a debt or daily I'm constrained to be Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. So, I know I need to point this out, 
but I don't know what happened here. It's very big and nice and pretty. And Henry, if you make me laugh that hard again, I'm in trouble. <laughs> you, did you see what he did? No, it's okay if you didn't. Go watch the video. Because now there's evidence, Henry. <laughs> but you had me laughing too hard. So this, this uh, bouquet was made up floral arrangement. Is that the right term? Sorry. I'm trying here. You know I'm not frilly, right? Like, that's just not my thing. I'm lucky I remembered it was Mother's Day. Again, just not my thing. But we put this together with flowers uh, to represent both mothers who are still with us and those who have passed. And I know that a lot of work went into making it because I was picking on Michelle and she couldn't respond because she wasn't sitting in here. Because she was busy putting the arrangements together. <laughs> She's laughing. She was busy putting some arrangements out there together, actually. But thank you for, for those of you who participated, and please uh, make sure that you take note of the arrangements that are out there in the Fellowship Hall. I know for many, this particular Sunday is a day that doesn't necessarily bring about good feelings. There, there are those who have tried to be mothers and can't, those who have lost their children. There are many kinds of mothers in the world around us, including those who maybe never had children but know how to be that mothering kind of person. I often think one of the things that's been difficult for me as a, a female, a pastor, and a mother is that sometimes you think I'm going to mother you, but I think we've gotten to know each other well enough to know that you know I'm not going to do that, right? But whatever it is that God, that you ask God to provide for you in the form of someone who can offer that to you. May you experience the comfort you need and then know that the God we worship has given his all for each and every one of us, whether or not our family circle is perfect. He calls us and equips us and then enables us to share his message of love with this world. So go as his disciples and make disciples. Go in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> See, you make me want to tell a story. Never make a preacher want to tell a story once they're done. Because then you'll be here another hour. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Everybody stand. <laughs> you know the rules. No hitting. Shalom to you.